ንሕና <laughs> نحنا نفسنا تمثل نبر متى كاتنا يزفون وجن تمثل عند اللينا قالتي زمرر انت مرر زنوح انت نوحي اما جرشتا عوتنا جدنا My name is Sophia Tesfomeriam and uh, I'm actually here wanting to see what Dr. Barahat looks like after reading his writings for many years. <laughs> um, what, I also come to these sessions because I'm looking for answers, right? And these one statements about uh, so-and-so is pugnacious, so-and-so is this much without any explanation doesn't tell me much because I have my own reservations and I could say you're opportunistic, you're pugnacious, you're rude, you know, you took advantage of Eritreans, you took advantage of Ethiopians, but they wouldn't mean anything unless I give explanations and they could do it in half an hour, right? <laughs> So, we're here to discuss what are the issues in the Horn of Africa today, and this book in particular. The three authors who are in that book are three people who are not engaged with Eritrea, have never been to Eritrea in the last 20 years at least, and have anti-Eritrea sentiments, which Dr. Barahat also shares. So, how do we get a, a clear picture of what Eritrea is about from a book that doesn't address the other side? So. That's one issue with the book that I have. The second question of, that I want to ask Dr. Barahat is, when you say no engagement and isolation of Eritrea, you single-handedly promoted a 10-year uh, campaign to isolate Eritrea 
economically, humanitarian aid. You had many, many, many dealings with the State Department where you wanted them not to have any relationship with Eritrea, so you got your wish. So now the door or the window of opportunity that uh, Jandai Frazier started to close and uh, Susan Rice slammed shut, to me, is a welcome. As, as much as it sounds bad, I, I actually welcome this closing of this window so that Eritreans can breathe a little bit without this uh, nagging and annoyance from, Eri from the United States and, and allies like you, if you're what, what represents the United States. And fortunately, you don't represent the United States. So are you going to stop your campaign or has your campaign now reached its climax? You've got the sanction that you wanted. So what next for you? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation and for making the trip across the pond. You said that Eritrean children or Eritreans are raised to perhaps hate America or know America as an enemy. I don't recall being raised that way, but I was raised uh, knowing what John Foster Dulles said, and that was the beginning of how America began with Eritrea. And I do know of the uh, $20 million worth of arms that the Carter administration did sell to a uh, Marxist regime. So I guess in some ways perhaps we were raised in a way to know and to be politicized in that way. But I don't recall any such animosity when we were, did receive our liberation uh, through armed struggle. There is a reason why America and, and Eritrea broke down, and some of it has to do with Sid Barre and what the U.S. wanted out of uh, President Issa Safa working. Uh, my former professor, Dr. Berdachet, you know, is calling for some sort of psycho-Freudian analysis of President Issyas. I don't agree with that, but I have a, one issue, and I haven't read your book, but with what you've continuously said today, which is that the U.S. needs to uh, pressure Ethiopia to uh, accept the ruling of the Boundary Commission. There's so much evidence that the U.S. has not only not pressured Ethiopia, but according to Ambassador Bolton, not known as a friend of Eritrea, and the leaked U.N. memo from Jendai Nye Frazier, that the U.S. has actually been hindering the implementation of the findings of the Boundary Commission. There's a difference, in my opinion, between not pressuring and actually being an obstacle. So it's sort of like um, you're not really paranoid if they're really following you. So if you could, you know, perhaps address that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Good question. That one right across the way there. Yeah. Hi. Um, Samhar Raya with Oxfam. Uh, thank you, Richard and Dr. Berahut, for your presentations. <laughs>
كزور دعل عد عدي كلاتنا نفلتينا زورتات زي كل غزيتا انتينا خن بزلنا حجب استاكبنا لنا كابز مش وصانا هاب صباح جمير كان لحد تخطات يلقى قال صال لحد شوره خطان حكم اتقاليو نيشتو ما بقاس زلو تغانينو زي ملكو حيز زقرب يو تقاليو ها وصو حسيت تمال ده حسو ده حسو النسب حسو مهان هاد فلتكو صباح ها هل نجر ولا حق نجر انه الله امنه يقبالني سترا يكون دائما ما عندي يكون سي و حساو يخاف له خلالني تحسوا لها ها والله حمزنا حدا سبع يدبلو سريقو حدا سبع يقلا نغير سي سراق مبال سلا تصلو ورزيد بول سبع سلا زخون وسادي لو ما احنا هم نكبر لنا ابو واحد سي سب سي دنا غيرنا حمزه الله حسو حمزه الله ادلس نغرو خلال لنا سوي له حمد الله يحسو نغون غوس نغتفو يبلنا I had a question similar to the last two about this engagement aspect, and particularly both of you highlighted the personality issues within the Eritrean Ethiopia context and the historical um, reverberations of continued failed policies. And I'd like to maybe ask on the other side of this is the Washington and United States perspectives, and Eritreans hold a deep um, you know, index of all the times that Washington and the international community has misunderstood Eritrea. But I think in this particular juncture, when we have um, a new administration, and I think many of us had high hopes for 2009, the first year with President Obama, um, a return of, of many um, personalities and individuals who had worked on the horn for, for, year, for decades, uh, 20, 30 years, who were familiar with EPLF, who knew, who had previously engaged. We have some people here in the room who, have, who served in that capacity in the Clinton administration. And I think we, ex many of us everywhere, expected to see a, a resumption of engagement in this holistic way. And instead, it's more of the same. Um, if, if, if either one of you could comment sort of on the prospects of engagement within this administration, because we, we're seeing a continued a perspective on counterterrorism, emphasis on military um, responses to the horn when clearly there's a need for humanitarian response, economic engagement, political re resolution. And this was the administration many of us felt were, were most likely to pursue that. Um, and, and I'm sorry, Richard, for making you answer in the contemporary sense, but, but realistically, many of us are sitting here in Washington and thinking, what now um, with Somalia, with the sanctions, with these Ethiopian elections, with Eritrea's continued isolation, and now more or less being punished um, by the international community. So, Thank you very much. A very good question. Do I have one more? We'll take right at the back there. We'll take a third question. This gentleman right here. Is. <laughs> I think uh, Terry have, has uh, raised a very important question uh, that says uh, EPLF was the most brilliant organization and what happened and uh, I'd like to give Terry a little hint. Mm -hmm. The change happened in 1998 when the war started. And the answer was given by Prime Minister Meles Zenawi after the war ends. And Prime Minister Meles Zenawi said, this can be researched, said, we've done everything we could, including buying human beings so that they can help us on a, a war. So all those human beings that were bought by these people start coming out and shading a bad name to Eritrea for the last 10 years. So that's what happened. Eritrea has not changed it. The leadership of Eritrea has not changed it. Eritrea is doing what has been doing, but people change it and become anti-Eritrea. And uh, uh, Richard, said uh, President Isaiah's proverb is, the dogs are barking, but the camel is marching. Yes, the camel is marching. Eritrea is the only country that will be succeeded in food security in a very, very near future according to the, uh, to the UN schedule. Eritrea is building 63 schools in 100 days. Eritrea is doing a lot of uh, uh, 
work for its people. That's what uh, you said. Nobody knows where the camera is marching. The camera is marching towards that. So it's not Eritrea has not changed. It's it's the money, the lobbying that has thrown into uh, the world by Ethiopia that shaded Eritrea a different picture. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank if you think I'm anti Eritrean, well, you are entitled to your, to, your, to your belief, but I'm not. You know I'm not. If you think I'm anti Eritrean, well, you are entitled to your, to, your, to your belief, but I'm not. You know I'm not, but I'm not. You know I'm not, but I'm not. You know I'm not. I've been part of Ethiopia. There's a larger sense in which we are all Ethiopians. <laughs> <laughs> And my wish and my hope before I die is that we'll come back together. Ha 
تهمني اي تحما منا اي تموتني اي ترحقي خي قرني اي تموتي كي تموني تغير رعينا تقابلني اي تحما منا اي تموتني اي ترحقي خي قرني اي تموتي كي تموني صدري فتحنا اوتي اسمع عن نبات بري خدمتي قدرني اقاوم صحاي تعرب لي اخبار خزامهاي ام صدري فتحنا اوتي اسمع عن نبات بري خدمتي قدرني اقاوم صحاي تعرب لي اخبار خزامهاي اي تحما منا اي تموتني اي ترحقي خي قرني اي تموتي كي تموني تغير العين اتقابلني اي تحما منا اي تموتني اي ترحقي خي قرني اي تموتي كي تموني